So for today's lesson, we're going to focus on the, the biggest social network of all, Facebook. I'm not covering it on day one, as you, as you notice, for various reasons that we'll get into today. But I'm going to write notes in a notepad file, and I'll give you these notes at the end of the day. I'll remind you where they are in a moment. But um, I'm going to write notes. Today we're covering Facebook. So uh, user base. This is at about 1.8 billion users. That's billion, not million. The population of the world is about 6 billion or 6.5 or maybe 7 by now. But uh, the population of Facebook, that could, that's, that's a nation. That's, that's China right there. That's India. That's a huge nation of users using Facebook. This is uh, one of the pros and cons. Simply its size is pros and cons of Facebook. So pros, long established, so founded in 2014, uh, very well known. Uh, you probably know most of your friends and family are on Facebook. There's probably that one weird holdout that isn't on Facebook for various reasons. Not to put them down, I'm one of those one weird holdouts too. Uh, I personally hate Facebook. I, I don't like to use Facebook for personal purposes. I really dislike it. Now, the, um, the business aspect of Facebook, I love that, which is what we're going to be covering. So we're not going to talk today about how to use Facebook to send the funny, the latest funny cat pictures to your friends and family. We're going to use it uh, to reach an audience, uh, which is different, a different purpose for Facebook. It has a big reach uh, because of those numbers of users and because people use Facebook all day long, have it logged into their computer all day long, or are on their... Uh, mobile device on it all day long. Facebook is amassing a lot of information. From a personal point of view, that's, for me, too much. It's too intrusive. It knows everything about you. One, because you tell it subtly or obviously, consciously or unconsciously, and the other because, again, it's kind of paying attention to you when, you're, when you don't even realize it. Uh, that's good for advertisers. That's good for advertisers because, uh, or marketers or companies, because then we know exactly who to reach. So, Can I just say that about all the social platforms? Then? Yes, the right audience. All of the platforms basically now are pretty intrusive that they uh, ask you about yourself and they put a cookie on your computer and they track you, and that's obviously the, the most. Uh, scary way to say it that they track you but it's just that that's the nature of pretty much every website nowadays for good or for bad uh, so you can find the right audience because people there are writing oh I'm doing this I'm watching that I checked into here I'm doing X and Y so we can, um, <coughs> we can tap into that as a business because we can reach the right audience also, um, uh, a lot of users. We have our immediate circle of connections uh, in the real world. We would tap into that network of real people that we know to tell them about our business or our brand, our product, etc. And it goes far, uh, far enough. You might have friends of friends in the real world that then can know find out about your business and buy your product. But in Facebook, you can reach people all over the world, all over the city, um, all over the nation, all over the state to find who would be interested in your product, buy your product, etc. Cons. Intrusive. Again, from the personal point of view, uh, 
I, 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 I think it's too much that it uh, really goads you into like you log in and the top is what are you up to today? What are, what are you watching? What are you what do you like? And all of that like a very conversational sort of way. And the purpose of that is again to accumulate data on you to then be you can get marketed to. It um, the people behind the company, the actual people that run the company are not that great people, are not that moral people, are not that ethical people. But when you're in a big business, uh, when you've when you've created a huge multi-billion-dollar company in your twenties, perhaps you don't have the know-how to be the most ethical yet. And there's so many privacy snafus that happen. So many times where a new setting has been rolled out that breaks a different setting. Maybe I created a Facebook account and I want to only connect with my friends and family. And I change all the settings so that only friends and family can see it. There's been so many times that those settings have somehow Undone, undone themselves and suddenly your account is completely private or completely public and everyone can see it. It's happened to the sister of the founder of the company. So if even the top people have that problem, what about us as, as regular people? Um, you've also got the problem of uh, actually finding the right people because of the of the size of it it's so many people you're a needle in a haystack you're one of 8.1.8 billion users well if you're focused on being a company in Facebook you're still one of millions hundreds of millions perhaps of a certain company let's say I'm a realtor there's lots of realtors on Facebook okay let's say I'm a realtor that focuses only on La Jolla properties there's lots of realtors that focus on La Jolla properties on Facebook let's say I'm a realtor that focuses on La Jolla properties that only will sell seven million dollar homes there's lots of realtors on Facebook that focus on La Jolla and focus only on seven million dollar homes so you're in a needle in a haystack no matter how specific you think you are and if at a certain point you might be too specific no one's going to find you because there's so much to see and do and experience and waste time on on Facebook. You're a needle in a haystack. And another con, actually, I'll separate it into its own sort of pro con at the same time. What's a good word for that? It's a pro and a con at the same time. An aspect. aspect. Okay, we'll say in aspect is that. Um, uh, best results via payment. I'll leave that a little ambiguous for the moment. So I'll just mention that for the moment. We'll get into it deeply a little bit later. This could be a good thing. This could be a bad thing. But I'll explain it in detail later on. So Facebook has both a personal profile and a brand or business page. That's like Google+, Plus. that's like Pinterest, that's like LinkedIn and most networks. There is the personal version and the business version. You want the brand page for your business, not the personal. I'm capital, I'm shouting that for a reason. Uh, Technically, somewhere in the hundreds of pages of the user agreement, it says something about you will use Facebook the proper way. The proper way is a personal profile for a person and a brand page for not a person. That, of course, is also ambiguous. Uh, so the easiest way to say it, if I'm a business, I need a business page. That's it. If I'm a brand, I need a business page. If I'm a musical group, I need a business page. If I'm selling a specific product, I need a business page, aka a brand page. The only reason you're going to have a personal profile if you are a person and you're only using it to connect with your friends and family. If you're doing anything else business-wise, 
you want the brand page. If you're a nonprofit organization collecting donations, you want a brand page, always. Within the terms of service in there somewhere, it says you need that. And technically then, if you're violating those terms of service, you can get shut down. So all of the work and effort you've done on Facebook goes away. And it's very difficult to talk to a real person to figure out these problems. There's 1.8 billion people here. There's lots of stuff on Facebook. There's lots of things to fix constantly on Facebook and to deal with. And the company, they've got an army of people running and monitoring Facebook and such. But, you know, rather than trying to deal with that, just do it the right way. The good news is that you can convert your page, if it's the wrong kind of page, into the right kind of page. So why? It follows the terms of service, gives you more features. Works best for a business or brand or nonprofit or whatever. Remember, I use the just the keyword of or the short the shortcut word of business, but this applies to anything you're trying to do on Facebook that is not personal. Gives you more reach and targeting. So with the right kind of Facebook page, we can do a lot. If it's the wrong kind, if it's a personal one, we can upgrade it. We can, we can fix it. So uh, very similar to Google+, we use or create a personal profile and then create Add, manage one or more business pages, brand pages. Now the official terminology I believe is brand page, but I've been using it for years, back when they were called uh, fan pages, they might have also been called business pages. So I believe the official current terminology is brand page, and I might use the, the other terminology just because I've use this a long time. But we want a personal profile to then create or manage one or more brand pages. You don't have to use the personal profile at all. Uh, you don't have to put your what your high school was. You don't have to put what your favorite movie is. You don't have to put what you're doing. But with one log in, you can then manage and create multiple brand pages. I think they've loosened it up recently that you can just go directly to create a brand page. The problem is that you're going to need one email per brand page. So if you have, if you just want to use one email, either personal or business email, in the personal profile, it will then let you create and manage multiple brand pages. A use case scenario for me, for example, is that I uh, am part of a business that we manage uh, social media for clients. So I log in with my personal email address to my personal Facebook and then I switch over to the brand page of the client. Many people can work on that brand page. We'll see how to do that, adding more managers. But this is, I believe, one of the better ways to do it, using your personal profile to then manage brand pages. There's a way to go directly to create and manage brand pages, but I think it's, it's a little limited. So what we'll do then is we'll, we'll create or manage a page. And like the other days, I recommend uh, to create a testing page, um, then delete it when you're done with it, or, or keep it if you like it. Uh, simply because uh, I'm going to go through a variety of, of screens and settings, and just so that we're all looking at the same thing, I recommend we all create a brand new one together. Like Google+, Plus, we can use a personal email or a business email, it does not matter. It can be changed at any point. 
But the point is we want one account to then manage one or more brand pages. Any questions on any of these concepts? Yes? In the settings. We'll look at that screen in a moment in the settings. Yes? Possibly. Um, that's a good point. Give it a try. I think we'll be able to. We might have some limitation. It often wants you to confirm your email before you get all the features. So we can give it a shot, and if not, you can use an existing one. So let's uh, open up our uh, web browser, and we'll go to facebook.com. Facebook.com. I remember mistyping some of these names and then they still work. I think this was one. Anyway, Facebook.com. Yes, I'm just trying to see. I think I remember you used to be able to type Facebook.com and it did go to Facebook.com. Well, I hope I don't stumble onto something I shouldn't, but <laughs> the point of that is just that these big famous companies, well, Google is spelled obviously with two O's, but sometimes you accidentally type G-O-G-G-L-E. These big companies buy their wrong, you know, their, their misspellings just in case people type the wrong, the wrong address. Anyway. Here, then, we have uh, either to log in or sign up. This is asking here if you're going to sign up to create a personal profile because your business doesn't have a birthday. That's different than your founding day. That's on another screen. There is, right here, create a page for a celebrity. I'm not going to go through this route or this route. Uh, which I think anyway, this will still have you logging in, maybe. But I wouldn't go the I, I still wouldn't go this way. I would go through the route of using your existing Facebook. You probably have a Facebook, or maybe you're like me, I have a Facebook, but I never log in for personal. So for the class, I would ask you log in with your personal and then we'll see how to create a brand page. Or if you want, make it all up completely here, but go to the create a page. Okay. Questions? Because I don't know. Yeah, I would try that. You should see similar to what we're going to see. Just go there, and then uh, just pause for a moment. So for most of us, uh, log in with personal, then I'll show you how to create the brand page. If you really, really don't want that, go to the create page, but just wait a moment. I'm going to log in with personal. Hopefully nothing untoward appears. The big idea is that we need to log in. So again, I don't, I don't want to gripe on it, but honestly, full disclosure, I hate Facebook. I, I, I just don't like to use it for personal. Keep your account secure and easy to use. Give us your phone number. Yes, that is a good thing to keep it secure, but no thank you. Not now. Not now. Every time I log in, but it still reminds you. So I'm on the personal account. You don't want to do anything on the personal account. You want to switch over to your brand account. This is how you would do it once it's set up, and I'll show you how to set it up in a moment. On the top right corner, there's a little black triangle next to help. I'm sure that has an official name. But if you click on that little black triangle, in my case, your pages. These are the pages that I've created and can manage. Or these are the pages that someone else has given me access to, to, to work on. You might not have anything there. That's OK. That's what we're about to, to do together. But once it's set up, I can jump over to this business or that business or the other 10 businesses I help manage. Um, well, if you don't have that or you need to create one, create page, manage page. So I've logged into my personal. I'm going to click create page, which will take you back to that screen right there if you wanted to go directly to create a brand page. But again, the point, is, especially for me, is I need to manage multiple businesses. So I have one login and I can manage all of those businesses. 
a possibility for yourself. If you are only yourself, you don't want a personal profile, but you want to do a business, sometimes people create multiple Facebook pages for their business. A main Facebook page, and then a, a different one like to focus on a particular product. That's more work, more effort, because now you've got to manage your main Facebook and that ancillary Facebook page. That's a possible strategy. It's something to think about, but most of us have enough to do already, so probably just one will be enough. From this screen, we have six big possibilities. I'm thinking about the fictional Victor's Bakery. So out of these possibilities, in your opinion, where would Victor's Bakery possibly fit in here? Local business, probably, if I'm on Main Street. But what if I'm Victor's Bakery and I only sell cupcakes online? I don't have a physical location. So perhaps brand, perhaps company. It's kind of ambiguous. There's no real wrong answer, but the big idea is that this one really is for you have a physical location because it's going to ask you, type in the address to your physical location and your phone number to your business because it'll want to verify you. This is what prevents your competitor from creating a fake page of your business and putting terrible things to drag your reputation down the mud, through the mud. They don't have access to your phone number to verify you. They are not at your location. If I'm a plumber, that I go to people's locations and I don't have an office, most likely then company, possibly brand, could work. This one doesn't ask you for a physical location. You can add that later or a phone number, but definitely you need a publicly visible address and a publicly visible phone number if you go with local business or place. Brand, again, uh, my brand is, you know, uh, Victor's Cat Food, and that would work as a brand. That's the name of my company. Artist, band, entertainment, cause, or community. So that's where I might go for nonprofits and such. NGOs. Um, there's a spot for just about everything. And as long as it follows the basic rules in the Facebook Terms of Service, which are found under there, just about any kind of page can be created. I remember a few years ago, someone got a little bit of internet, of fleeting internet fame when uh, there was an article that, that said someone, uh, someone created a Facebook page called something like, um, if I get a million likes, my, mom, my wife will let us name our child Megatron. <laughs> so they created an entertainment or a cause page or whatever. And uh, if they, the goal was if they get a million likes, the wife would let the child be called Megatron. And they did get a million likes. Now, I don't know if they did follow through or just did it the middle name. So, you know, Emily Megatron Smith or something. But anyone can create a page of anything. I'm going to go with company because I don't have a physical location. And then you've got a category, a bunch of categories, which can be changed. Any of this stuff can be changed at any point. Victor's Bakery fits under the food and beverages. And then company name is sort of like in Twitter and... Google Plus and every other network, the full name. This is the name where I can put a really big name. I don't think there's an actual limit. A really big name. Spaces, capital letters, symbols, um, emoji, etc. That, that one is not unique. Just like every other uh, user, uh, full name in any other network. On a different screen, we would choose the username, which is the unique one that only one can have in the world. I'm going to go with Victor's Bakery. There can be more than one Victor's Bakery. And every time I teach this class, I make a new Victor's Bakery, and it lets me. So this one is not unique. Is that the same on the brand or the product page? There can be 22 different Victor's Bakeries? Mm -hmm. All of them can have a company or full name. That is the same. But then on a separate screen, we will get the username, which is one unique address that only one can have. And that has to be a website? No, uh, what I mean is we're going to get an address, facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. If, if that one is taken, I can't take it. I have to be facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery 2. 
That's on the next screen. So I'm going to go with company, putting in my items, get started. And is there a clear distinction why you would want to go with that category as opposed to going from the brand page? There might be some subtle differences. Uh, I think also what the Facebook algorithm does is it tries to show your page to the right people that would care the most if you put it in the right category. So if you uh, don't quite put it right, it can be changed. And it sort of feels like it doesn't really matter where you what you choose there, because the actual content of your page is the number one thing that will help you get found, not that one setting that, that we set two years ago. Now in my case, it took me directly. They might have just changed this also. There used to be a process here. But it, to me, it just took me directly to my page. Did you guys get a different screen? Got a lot different. Okay, so I guess it is still going to ask you to create some kind of account there. Let me just see what that looks like. So it's not doing it. I guess it doesn't fully let it let it do it now. But so keep logging in and then it's going to ask you to create a regular account, a regular personal account. So I think I'll let you know. Yeah. Not a lot of crap, not lying on that, but just fill it in the middle of that. So, yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah. Oh, you got Facebook is the one? No. Oh, you got around the round. But they, oh, it took them that. They started it to business. That's right, that's the final. steps where it would ask you to choose your target audience and other things. And it looks like they just changed that. Last time I taught this in uh, December, there was still uh, a few more steps, like four extra steps to do before we got to this screen. So that's interesting. They just changed it. So I have here a brand new page uh, for my business. This I will have to do like what I've done from my other networks, I need to fully set it up. I need to add a picture or a logo of my business. I need to add a cover picture. Well, very similar to Twitter, some sort of square picture, some wide graphic for the branding, uh, getting inspiration also from other, other businesses. For example, facebook.com slash instructor Victor C. 
So I have here a page. Uh, you might want to you might want to follow this page. I, I do note future classes that are coming out. Notice I have a I have a unique address here, a username, facebook.com slash instructor Victor C. Capitalization doesn't matter, but I put capitals in there for readability. So the purpose that the purpose of that brand page is to tell people these are the classes that I'm teaching. Maybe follow or like this page to pay attention to future classes. If I've got Victor's Bakery, well, I'm trying to sell cupcakes, I'm trying to sell baked goods ultimately, so I'm using my Facebook to market my, my, my products. If I'm a realtor, I might use Facebook to try to reach an audience, buyers or sellers of houses, it's just like every other social network. I have a unique address for that account. You, most likely, at the moment, have something more like this. I just created Victor's Bakery, and I've got facebook.com slash victors-bakery-gibberish, which I'm never going to remember. So you have the ability, you might have the ability to edit that under create page username. So just like Twitter, there's one unique username, which is your Twitter address, which is your Facebook address. If this is just a fake page, I would not go through the process of claiming that username, because then I'm going to take the name from myself. If you already have a Facebook page and you're creating another one just for the exercise of this class, you don't want to take your username away from yourself for this fake page. If you delete it, I guess it releases it, but I would be I would be wary of that just in case. Mm -hmm. this, this page is not Sometimes, depending on various policies, you might not be able to get a username until you get it a little more popular. It's oftentimes at least twenty-five likes, possibly thirty likes. It varies, it seems. So if you cannot claim your username right away, we need to build some likes, which of course we'll, we'll talk about how to do that. That's to help, I guess, prevent spam. If a spammer can create a page just like a regular person and they take all of these names, they might then sort of hold a name for ransom. I really want that name, Victor's Bakery, I'll pay $100 for it. And they'll gladly take your $100, even though they're violating the terms of service. So uh, they set it up that perhaps you might not be able to set it up. I already have used Facebook for years as business, so I guess it's letting me do it right away. But perhaps for most of you it won't because you're, you're, you're new to it, maybe. So at some point you want your, your logo there, your cover graphic. You can do that at a, at a certain point. I don't have my graphics ready, so I can't do it. Uh, but that's the same purpose as every other social network. Why would someone follow or like a page that is not complete. You want it complete to entice people to to like you, to follow you. Yes? So back to the username, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I have an account already, and I'm setting up a temporary, and it's showing up there my temporary address. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that is still not valid until I get 25 or 30 likes. No, this address right here, this gibberish one, is valid. I can start to share that with people right away. But I want a short, memorable one, and I can't, without the numbers, and I can't claim it yet. Yeah. So my question is, how do you know, do they, is there a pop-up that says you to allow? Um, possibly, since most of the pages that I manage have been verified a while ago, sometimes I don't see some of the newest things. Possibly. Uh, I don't doubt that there's something that tells you that because they want you to have a, the best experience on Facebook. So probably once you get enough likes, it will pop up and say, you're eligible for a unique username. If not, you yourself keep track of your likes, and it'll tell you somewhere here how many likes you have. Uh, right over here, likes, I have zero. You keep track of it yourself, and when you hit 25, try to go to it. If it still doesn't work, go for 30, and then it should work. 
Well, there's a lot to to see and do uh, with Facebook, especially to reach the right audience. Uh, I want to first get a general sense of the layout. Uh, it's going to be very familiar if you've used personal Facebook, but if you haven't, uh, this will be new. And even if you've used a personal profile, there's going to be different things here because it's a business page. It has things that you might not see on personal. We have at the very top left the Facebook icon, which takes you back to your own personal content. You've got search at the top here, which again searches inside of Facebook only. This has also a lot of value like every other social network. I can search for topics, for keywords, to find people uh, posting about that topic which I can then try to connect with, like Twitter, Google+. We've got then, following that same row, uh, profile takes you back to your personal profile of what you've set up for personal. <clears throat> Home is the same as clicking on the Facebook icon, your timeline, your your wall that they used to call it. Find friends to connect with friends and, and family, suggestions which are friends of friends and all of that. You can also put in your email address and high school and find more friends. Um, notifications. Here Facebook breaks it into three different screens of notifications. Every other network has it consolidated. Uh, this will give you friend requests, how many people are trying to connect with you on your personal account. For business, that screen is worthless because this is for friends, uh, people to people connections, not people to business connections. You've got then the messages, the private chats. Again, that's worthless for business. That's going to be personal to personal. I want business communication. Then you've got the regular notifications. This is the one that does matter for your business. I manage more than one business, so I get lots of notifications from all of the businesses I manage, and it's telling me Serena Lopez liked that business's photo. Uh, Arianda Ibarra and 18 others recently liked that photo. Uh, that account has seven uh, has a new notification, etc. So in my case, it's always cluttered. Uh, but if you've got one business, your notifications will show up here. We've got two kinds of help up here. Quick help to do a search and, and search for a particular topic, the deeper help, and then the triangle. This is the one where I can switch between the different businesses if you've got them, and manage them all at once to delete them, for example. Switch between accounts. What's that? No, that's slightly different. They have to remove you. Whatever uh, uh, pages you create, you can delete your own thing. So you need to talk with someone that manages that to remove you. Although it says your page is there. If under your pages that business is there, there will be a way to remove yourself. We can look during the, the break. Uh, from this screen, we also have other things, groups, ads, activity log, and then log out. On the next row down, we've got page. This is the home page, so to speak, of your business page, your brand page. This always takes you back to, to look at it here as, it, as, your, as your followers. It also shows you your address. So if you wander off somewhere else, this is part of the confusion of using Facebook, which they've made, I think, a little more confusing. If I was over at Instructor Victor, and I was looking at all of this great Facebook stuff here for this account, and I then click on Home, that's going to take me home back to my personal account. I want it to go back to the business account. If Again, if I hit the Facebook icon, it takes you back to personal. Victor takes me back to personal. I have to somehow switch over back to that business. There's the triangle. If you've only got one business, it should show up there. If you've got multiple, you'll need to see more. 
or you can easily wander off of your page to somewhere else, and if you want to get back to it, you can go back to the triangle. Or type the name of your own business in the search box. Messages. These are the ones that matter more than the messages up on the top up here. These are personal messages of chats that you shouldn't look at. But these are messages of your business that you're having communication with your clients and customers. You can, it's like one on one chatting with your customers as your business. Victor will not show up as Victor replied to you as a client. It'll say Victor's Bakery replied to you. So my personal info will never show up on my any of these business pages unless I want it to. People often are skittish about that. I don't want to use my personal email to manage the business account. It's separate. Facebook does a good job of separating that. So my personal stuff will never show up on Chila Truck, for example, or any other of these businesses. Unless I accidentally forget, if I click on Home and I think I'm sharing something on the business, it's going to go on my personal, not the business. So messages. Um, when you're logged in, you can uh, be communicated to by customers. You can activate an away uh, message so it's like, you know, we'll be back at this time when I'm answering questions, when I'm at the computer. There's also uh, response assistance which needs a little bit of setup which is which are bots, robots, bots. These new little programs that will automatically respond to your clients for you. That's something that you may think about setting up if you're, if you're not able to reply right away. We've got these different kinds of replies, instant replies and such. A person tries to contact you automatically, instantly it'll reply, thank you for messaging, messaging us. We try to be responsive, we'll get back to you. We've got the message greeting, what sort of text do you want to appear there. In the away message. If you're gone for some amount of time, it'll pop up and say, you know, we're gone until a certain time. Yes? Um, I got lost with, um, oh, I see it's under your location. Oh, okay. No, at the moment I'm under messages. Did you go to Messages, the tab at the top there? Oh, yeah. 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 Y
All right, so continuing here, checking out the various screens. Next to that are notifications. These are the notifications that are focused on this account. The notifications that I'm getting up there on that globe are, giving, are, are being given to me for every account I manage. Personal and the 12 businesses I'm connected to. It's overwhelming. So in this one business page, I can see only the notifications for this business. This is much better. It's focused. And under the, this screen, what I can look at is, well, show me everything. Show me who has liked my page. That's very valuable. You can see exactly who's liked your page and interact with them more directly. Reach out to them. Message them. Do that customer service one-on-one. -on -one. We can see who has commented on your page. What are the comments? Uh, dealing with them, replying with them, building community, deleting the spam and all of that. Uh, shares about your page, other activity. 
those are notifications. Activity, this is all related. Who's mentioned you? Requests. So all of these are related to people connecting with you, interacting with you. It's like Twitter, like Google+, there's a screen that focuses on what happens on your page. We want to keep up to date with that. This screen over here shows you invite friends to like this page. This is one of the tactics to try to build those likes. If I need those 25 likes to claim my username or get other features, perhaps I can convince 25 of my friends and family to give me a like. That's when you're going to discover if they really are your friends and family, if they do give you that like or not. So don't be surprised if someone doesn't like your page, especially if they've used Facebook for a while and say, oh, I don't, I don't want to like it. I, it's not something that I really like. I, yeah, they're my relative, but I don't really like cupcakes, so I won't click like. So this could be a way. If you, if you go through your friend list here and click invite, 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 they'll get a message that says, John is inviting you to like John's bakery. Click like or ignore. So that's a possible way to build those likes quickly. Now, in, in, my, in my company, uh, some of us believe in this very much and some of us don't. I don't believe in it very much, personally. Other people in my company always argue with me about it. Because I believe, are you going to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? I'm just getting a like because I need the username. But those friends right there are not interested in buying those products. They're not interested in reading my blog. They're not interested in donating to my nonprofit organization. So simply to get the likes, that's valuable. But ultimately, out of any of the social media, I'm trying to make sales. I'm trying to build awareness. I'm trying to get clients. I'm trying to get phone calls, generate leads. And if these friends are never going to do that, they're not that valuable. So you can do it. It's not that I'm saying not to do it. I'm just saying those are some of the limitations. Are you going to build your business on the friends of your back, on the backs of your friends and family? What do you do instead of inviting your past clients to? Invite your past clients. If you can find them, if you can search for them on, on Facebook and find them, that's a way then to, to invite them. We'll also talk about other tactics to, to generate uh, more likes out of people that we don't know. Is it not the case that the friends and family could be useful just in the sense of their network? It could, yeah. It's not completely un unuseful. I just, for myself, I like to focus on other tactics, but that's perfectly good reason as well. Friends of friends, definitely. Facebook, you know, it's intrusive and all of that, but it's good intrusive for us as businesses because it could say, John liked Victor's Bakery. Wouldn't you like to like it too? So it could further snowball and reach more people, possibly. If we look at insights, you may or may not have this. Uh, insights, you definitely don't have insights if you have a personal profile. Insights are the data, are the statistics of your account. Week by week, what's been popular, day by day, what hours, uh, what times of the day. Um, all of that very important stuff that helps us figure out what's effective, keep doing it. What's not effective, stop it or change it. You don't get that on a personal account. You don't need it as a personal account, Facebook believes. You're a person. You share that funny cat picture, grandma clicked like, you win. But here, I shared that picture of my photo, no one clicked on it. Why? I need to figure that out. Well, it was the wrong time of day. I wrote too much. The picture wasn't that good. This is the screen that will show you all of that, and it's empty. If you've got a brand new account, it's, there's nothing to look at. Let me switch over to one of our clients uh, to show you how it might look like for real. Something like this. We will see actual data within this time period of a week. There were these number of actions. What's an action? It's a like. It's a reply. All of that. Page views. People viewed the page a number of times. How many likes it got? On the videos. Videos were popular. 3,000 views. All of that. Now, there is a downward trend with this particular client for various reasons. But uh, if I go look at another client, uh, let's look at that one. Let's look at that there. So there was a spike in activity. Uh, in this recent time, reached 2,000 people. That doesn't mean 2,000 sales. We'll talk about those nuances. Remember, impressions and conversions.
When it says uh, reach, that just means it showed up on someone's page. Someone mm -hmm. saw it. So that was basically an impression. Reach is an impression. People saw it, not necessarily clicked or bought anything. Let's look at another one here. Same thing here, downward trend. It seems like January and February have been downward trends. It's been, you know, the weather's been too weird, I guess. These are, uh, this is a restaurant that's got a physical location, and um, so people haven't been going to it physically. But things happen in this time period again. A reach in impressions of 75,000 does not mean 75,000 sales. Uh, engagements or actions are the more valuable ones. Even if this were 12 clicks on my link, well, that could be 12 sales, that could be 12 phone calls, etc. But you, because as a as a personal uh, as a, an account that you just created, it's going to be pretty empty. There's organic and paid, and we'll touch on those later. But we can then see our stats here and all of this in detail, which videos were the most popular. I can share another video similar to the popular one. It may be popular again. Somewhere here it'll show you the time of day that was most popular. People always ask, what's the best time of day to post on Facebook? I don't know. It's different for every particular business. As I said previously, you're going to find plenty of articles that'll tell you, make sure you, you share something every day at 9 a.m., Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Well, that was great for some businesses, but not every business. So, lots of stats. And somewhere here it says the time of day that's best for this client. Anyway, for us, then that insights page is something that we don't get as personal profile. Publishing tools. This is a consolidated location where you can post things and check your library or your archives of what you've posted, what you've shared. If you're back on page, you always have the ability to to post something uh, right here, write something that's there, but also under the publishing tools with create. This is a spot where we can create and share a variety of things, which we'll look at. We'll also look at scheduled post drafts, expiring, etc. All the videos that I've ever uploaded, forms, so we can create feedback forms, task questions and such. Canvas, that's a new cool thing we'll look at later. We've got a lot of ways to publish. Twitter, we've got text, video, links, Google+, same thing, but we've got that styling, remember, bold and italics and such. Facebook has that too, pictures, links, slideshows, etc., videos, and some unique things like Canvas and notes, which we'll look at. What is this videos you can cross-post? That one is about... Uh, if I've shared a video to Victor's Bakery, I can really only easily reshare it in Victor's Bakery. If I go to that cross post and properly set it up, I would be able to share that video on more than one of my channels or more than one of my uh, pages. So for most of us, it doesn't have that much use. But if I'm managing more than one page, I might want to reshare that same video easily through my different pages. No, we don't have any videos yet. Yes? Well, you just to see if I understand right, you're saying you you only want friends to be connected to your business page but not your personal. I want only clients to be on your brand page. I don't want them on your personal page. You have the power to go to your personal account and then unfriend. Right? If they're a client and they friended you, you both chose to be connected. 
If I no longer want to be connected with Denise, I have to go to her page and click unfriend. But how would you find someone over to our grand page? Can you say you just wanted to invite people on your grand page to send them updates? Um, well, let's say Mario is not connected to my brand page. I would need to invite Mario to like my brand page. Right? I can send them right a, just a message right here. Here's my page. Please like it. If they then like it, then I go to Mario's page and then click the unfriend from my personal. So I'm friends, I can unfriend. So I have to do the extra work first of making them, sh making sure that they have liked my business page. Once that's done, then I unfriend them from personal. They don't get the notification that you're no longer friends, but then one day they'll say, why don't I see anything of John's pictures anymore? And then, you know, it's business, it's not personal. That's okay. No, unfriending is uh, you don't have the connection anymore, and they can try to friend you again and see your content. Blocking is definitely you're forbidden from any, ever connecting again, basically. Yes. Yes. That's a tactic. That's a tactic we'll go into detail, like we did into the Twitter and all of that. Okay. So right. that's a longer answer we'll get okay, to. Yes. Continuing the anatomy of Facebook, and then we'll take a break soon. Uh, let's look at settings. This is one of those boring screens that is very important to look at. Uh, question? Uh, kind of going back, where, where can you see the people who have liked your you're going to see that in a couple of spots. Let me go to one of these pages to confirm that. If I look under notifications, likes, uh, that should be the spot there. Notifications and then likes. These, uh, okay, these are people that have liked the page. I mean the, the photos. Oh, yes. Hunter has liked the page. It doesn't say they like your page. It, it, you're saying they like your page business. So it looks like it's a slightly different icon. Those with the thumbs up simply liked a uh, post. Those with that icon actually liked the page. But you can only see your personal profile friends that like your page, not strangers. No, this, this should be strangers. Santos and 38 others liked Chilatra. These this is everyone here that are strangers. Should be. I can find it under page. Looking page. under page? The left, uh, more like, on the left or the right? Left, 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 right here. Page. Seems like it. So back on page, and then likes. If you hover over the two likes, two others, you probably see other So if I go to likes and then where? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, when you see the palm now button, mm -hmm. and then hover under the two others, like I'm seeing a list of everybody. Most likely within this, within the most recent time period, because mine only says two more. So you might have had more within the recent time period. Yeah, possibly a week. So one place is, is looking under your likes there. Um, another place is under notifications, likes. There might be a way to filter it. Uh, but these icons here are the ones about... who has actually liked the page. It's in the, yeah. If it says like I have 17 likes, but only 12 friends have liked it, so I don't know who the other five people are actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> New clients. Well, which is good, but it's again, you know, when I'm trying to connect with them or yeah. that type of a thing, and I don't know how to do that. 
we'll, we'll talk about those strategies. Um, you could try clicking on their profile. I think it might show you more data. I can't, I can't see who they are. I only see the 12 friends that have liked my page, not the five other people that I don't know. They may have set their profile to private. They don't want to be communicated to by a brand page. So okay. we're stuck. We can't force. OK, that's why I didn't know if there was a way to see who they were. But if they set it to private, you can't see yeah. it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Let's look under settings here, the last screen. This has a lot of other screens to, to look at. I won't show you every single setting, but I'll touch on some important ones. Under settings, uh, we have general settings. Shortcuts, if I skip something or say don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Don't worry about shortcuts. Page visibility here is uh, I can unpublish the page. And not that I, not that I delete it, it's just that I hide it in Facebook. A possible reason for that is maybe I'm retooling the site, maybe I'm changing the graphics. That really just takes moments. There's no real reason to unpublish a page unless you're hiding because suddenly you got very controversial. So there's that. Page verified. Uh, mine is verified. Yours may not be. There's a process there. Email and all of that. Visitor posts. Okay, here's a big one. Visitor posts. For, for the good and the bad of Facebook, one of the best things about it is that it really helps you control your message. Uh, Twitter is the opposite. You can easily lose your message. I tweet something, I put a hashtag, and I say, hey everyone, show us your uh, show us your favorite Victor's Bakery cupcake. Hashtag it, tasty cupcake. Well, how it can get away from me is that people then start to post photos of the cupcake that fell on the floor, that had ants, that didn't look like advertised and then it got away from me. I can't control that. I've opened myself to that. If I do the same thing on Facebook, hey everyone, show us your favorite cupcakes and hashtag it Victor's Bakery. Well, they're going to be posting on my page on Facebook. And if anyone posts anything negative, I can remove it from my Facebook. If they're off topic, I can remove it. I can control my message. I can't go over to someone else's Facebook page, however, personal Facebook, and remove the picture. It's theirs. But still here, I can control the message on my page to guide the conversation. I cannot do that on Twitter. And there's so many examples of Twitter fails where that happens. A well-meaning campaign goes completely awry. On Facebook, I can control it more. The way I do that is right here, visitor posts. If you click edit, you have the option. Allow visitors to the page to publish posts. Let people write anything they want on my page. Yes or no. If I put disable there, no one. So none of these mean people will be able to write anything mean on my page. None of these annoying people will be able to write anything annoying on my page. I focus the message to what I want. That, however, I think is too harsh. Uh, this creates a monologue, which I think I've mentioned before, using social media can be as a monologue or as a dialogue. Uh, mono, one voice. Dia, multi voice, two voice, multi voice. A monologue in social media is only you are posting on your account to your followers. Better yet, at your followers. Dialogue is you post and reply and create community and let them reply. I try to run most of my classes also as a dialogue. I don't simply want to talk at you for three hours. I want you to say something, and I want to learn something from you. I want to hear what you have to say. That's a dialogue. It goes back and forth. We learn more from each other. If I simply say no questions until the end of the day, well, I'm shutting down a lot that could be beneficial. That's what's kind of happening here under Facebook. If I put it on disable comments, only I am posting something, only I am posting at my followers. I'm not nurturing a community. I'm not allowing the social in social media. 
one reason I might want to make it a monologue is, again, to guide the conversation. There is a happy medium, I think, however. Allow visitors to post. Review posts before they are published. That one is off by default. The most open version is turned on by default. Any crazy person can write any crazy thing on your page. Any nice person can write any nice thing on your page. If I shut it down like this, then none of the bad comments will come in and none of the good comments. And popularity breeds popularity. If people see that people are commenting nicely and on topic and such on your page, people may then decide to also communicate and get the conversation going and you're reaching an audience and you're building community and you're, you, you look like a real entity instead of a nameless company faceless company. The middle is if you activate review, then nothing will show up, good or bad, until you approve it. And all of those will show up in your notifications, I believe, so that then you can approve them. It does, it does take a little bit more work, but I think it pays off better than just shutting, out, shutting down communication. Letting people communicate, but then you approve what goes through. People sometimes have the question about, well, isn't that, you know, uh, isn't that infringing on free speech and all of that? Short answer is no. Free, uh, free speech and the First Amendment and all of that uh, applies in a general sense about governmental intrusion. Here, this is my Facebook. It's my property. Just like uh, in the real world, if a person comes to my front doorstep and yells at me, uh, berates me and all of that, I can say, get off my property, I'm calling the police, it's my property. Go yell at me on the sidewalk where the police will get you. So same thing here, this is my front porch. Don't yell at me on my own front porch. Make your own Facebook account and berate me there. I don't care. On my own property, on my own Facebook, I say what goes, good or bad, even if it's off topic. Doesn't uh, I can manage it how I want. I don't think, well, there's some different ways to do it on personal. I don't know very well because I don't do the personal one. But for the business one, this is the one you want. One of the ways to deal with the negativity on your personal is to click that button that says unfriend. And it still shows up? Hmm, it might be friends of friends stuff. That's, again, that's why Facebook, for business it's great. For personal, not so great, in my opinion. So what I would recommend here is uh, activate review posts. Uh, there's the option automatically let people write texts, text, photo, or video on my page, yes or no. If I only want people to write text, I turn that off. It's such a multimedia culture nowadays, I want to show my reaction with a picture. I want to respond to you with a little video I made, and especially for marketing purposes. Later when we create content and we say, Enter to win, you know, a hundred dollar gift certificate. Upload a video of you enjoying one of our cupcakes. People might want to do that more than writing. I had a great cupcake. It was great. They might want to instead record themselves briefly. I had a great cupcake. Look at it. Blah, blah, blah. And upload it. If I shut down the ability for people to share a video to my page, well, that kind of takes away from the modern usage of social media, the very visual multimedia aspect. If you make any changes here, then you want to save, and I recommend review posts. Keep it open, but review the posts. You will get notifications up on the notification button, and you will also see them under notifications to uh, approve. Mm -hmm. I started a brand page and I post things too, and then it shows up as a notification on my personal page that I have posted to that business page. And is that because I'm following my own business page? I don't necessarily want my business post to be announced. When I'm Some of these subtle settings, I have to look them up again because there may be, maybe we'll see it here. Uh, it shouldn't be showing you your activity 
on your business into your personal, but possibly because you as a person liked your own page and might be doing it. So that's one of those pitfalls there that I think I've got it set up, but because I liked my own page, now it's showing up in my personal. So you might want to unlike your own page. Same thing again. Yeah, somewhere possibly there might be a setting here that they changed recently that broke things again. Again, you gotta love Facebook. So I'll, I'll look. There might be a setting somewhere here. Uh, but off the top of my head, I'm not sure where to change that. Let's see what else. Uh, On your personal? I believe you are able, to, again, we're not going to touch too much on personal. I know people have questions on personal, but this is more for business. I believe that if you uh, are on your personal and you no longer want to see a particular item, I believe you are able to click on the little triangle up here and s okay, change some of that stuff there. Oh, because, you know, some people get tired of yeah. So, for whatever current ability we have on personal, it's going to be in here somewhere. I can unfollow, I can hide that post, report, turn off notifications. So we have some control there. settings here. Reviews. It's off by default. You can think about turning this on or off. I would recommend on. Reviews. This is now Facebook encroaching on Yelp's turf. For good or for bad. For good for us because more people use Facebook than Yelp even though Yelp is more famous for reviews. I can get reviews for anything. I don't have to be a physical location to have people review me. I can be a realtor and I can get reviews. This is word of mouth. This is the, the latest tactic for any of the social media. No matter how hard we try, maybe I'm posting something brand new every single day and I'm following all of the advice from all of these classes and I still don't get, I don't get off the ground. Well, getting people and their opinions, positive ones especially, really help you get off the ground and reach more people. Positivity breeds positivity. Popularity breeds popularity. So if you are in a, amassing a lot of likes and a lot of positive reviews, five-star reviews, four-star reviews, Facebook will see that and say, this might be a good page to recommend to more people. The people have spoken. If you're getting a lot of negative reviews, it might think of the opposite. A lot of people are putting this business down. It might not be that good. Why would we promote it to more people? This can be a double-edged sword, right? You may be inviting a lot of negative comments. Maybe your food isn't that great. Why let everyone tell you about it? So that's for you to decide. I recommend the review part of it. But keep in mind that now we need to do a little segue, which we were going to do previously about review sites. Facebook, Google Plus, what else is there, Kudzu, uh, Angie's List, Glassdoor, there's all of these review sites, TripAdvisor, you don't need to know them all, they're not all relevant to everyone, TripAdvisor like focuses on getting reviews from people out of town, so if I've got a bed and breakfast and I want people out of town to come to my bed and breakfast, Yelp lets you do that, but TripAdvisor focuses on people out of town to review, to focus on out of towners. Glassdoor is more for technology, I believe. Don't worry about what each of them are. You can research them on your own. These are a bunch of review sites, but all of them fall into purpose to get good reviews to deal with bad reviews. Yes. Tinder. Tinder is a little bit different. You can get reviewed there too, but uh, that one is more about personal relationships. Mm -hmm. 
So here, so here on the on, on any of these review sites, the purpose is that I'm trying to build good reviews, and I'm trying to deal with bad reviews, because here's the secret: good reviews are good, bad reviews are good. Yes, bad reviews. Okay, it's obvious why good reviews are good. People are saying good things about you. Popularity breeds popularity. Positivity breeds positivity. I'm seeing all those five star reviews. I'm seeing people writing good things. Bad reviews could be good if you then take the time to convert them into good reviews. So, with a bad review, Victor's Bakery, someone wrote there, the, biz the service was so slow, my, my crawler was cold by the time I took it home, I was in line so long, one star. Okay, well, that is an opportunity for me to reach out to that complainer and try to smooth it over, try to fix it. They may then come back, have a better experience, and that becomes a five star or four star review. So that one star became a four star, if I took the time to deal with it. Bad reviews are good if you deal with them. Don't bribe to get a good re review. By that I mean I've got a restaurant, and a common pitfall is someone a restaurant gets a bad review. They reply to the people and say, we're so sorry, uh, please come again, here's 10% off your next meal. Uh, let us know next time, uh, free, free dessert. Don't bribe them to get that bad review into a good review. Because unfortunately, people have figured out that I can write negative reviews to businesses I've never visited in the hopes that some of them will give me something for free. And I got something for free for complaining for something I never actually did. You never know. That's obviously the, the, the negative cynical side of it, but it's easy to, to see how that could happen. So you don't want to bribe. Instead, what you want to do... So... Um, you know, acknowledge the problem, offer concrete solutions, um, ask for another chance. However, these can be worded. Victor's Bakery, someone gave a bad review. Okay, replying and said, we're sorry you had a long wait in our line. We had a very popular day that day. It was Valentine's. Uh, try not to put sarcasm, actually. Sorry. Um, and uh, say, uh, oftentimes, Wednesdays, the line is a little faster. Try visiting us on a Wednesday. You could say also, uh, we had a problem with our payment system. We're working on it that... Uh, our system's been upgraded. Please come again next time. I think you'll have a better time. You know, keep it positive. Acknowledge the problem. Say what you're doing about it. There was a client a, a year ago or so that said someone wrote a bad review. Uh, they they said you know I'm never shopping here again. Uh, the the cashier was saying racist things that reflects on your business. I'm never coming back. So the client, of course, was panicking. Uh, we talked and, and said again, you know, you're not going to bribe the person to come back and all of that, but you're going to need to deal with that employee. So he replied to the person and said, you know, we're sorry about that. They do not reflect our, uh, our values. That person is no longer working at our establishment. Please give us another chance. You'll see that we really believe, etc. So that's obviously one of the harsher ways, things that could happen and that you have to deal with. Uh, but acknowledge the problem, have concrete solutions, and ask for another chance. Don't bribe and say, come back, they're fired, come back, here's a free dessert next time. Because they might have been all making it up. And any of these reviews that you deal with, good or bad, to reply in public. There isn't the ability for you to connect privately individual with individuals. You should still do it in public because it shows that you are a business taking things seriously, trying to do it correctly in public. Someone said, the food was, was cold, 
and it needed spice. Well, I'm replying and saying we're retooling our recipes, we're, you know, going back to the kitchen, we'll do it right. And we're doing that publicly so that people see that you're trying. If you were doing that privately, no one is going to see that you're trying. The person may never actually raise their star rating, but at least here, even if they never raise their star rating, they keep it at a one star, people will see you tried to fix it. That person just never went back and raised their star ratings. And apply in public for bad or good reviews. And what gets neglected all the time, I talked a lot about the bad ones. What gets neglected for the good ones is the same sort of thing. Be active. Thank people for the reviews. Don't be another nameless or faceless company. You get all of these great positive reviews. You're a small up-and-coming company. A couple of people are saying great things about you. Take a moment to reply to them publicly and say thank you for, for your comment. We try our best. Uh, let your friends know about us. Right. So be public and reply and keep the positivity flowing. Um, the reason that the reviews is off is I don't believe you can remove bad reviews. That defeats the whole purpose of this. So if you turn it back to yes, review me, you might have to deal with the bad reviews. You can't delete them. So here are some tactics to try to, de try to deal with them. This applies to Yelp, to Facebook, to TripAdvisor, and just list all of those things. And that's just more effort, but it could pay off if you turn on Allow Reviews. Yes? I just want to let you know it's finally acknowledged. Finally acknowledged. Okay, great. So if you make a change there, you can save it. We'll do one more thing, and then we'll take a break. Uh, news, feed, audience, and visibility for posts. Blah, blah, blah is off. Uh, we have the ability to target our posts specific to specific groups, to specific demographics. That's what marketing in the real world, that's what marketers in the real world kill for. I want to show this ad on TV to the right person. I need to know the right channel, the right time of day, and other factors to reach a person on a TV commercial. Here I have it much easier on digital marketing like this, and it's off. The ability for me to target people between 20 and 25 years old, female, that are interested in uh, this novel. I can target it that directly, what my posts are, who they can reach, and it's off. Most likely it's off by default. This is one of the ones I really recommend to turn on, and we'll see how it works when we actually post something. By turning that on, the blurb here says, when you create a post, you can choose which people see it by selecting your audience's interest, gender, age, and more. It's very good to turn that one on. So it's been a little while. Let's take a break. Uh, we still have a, a couple of other settings to do, then we'll get deep into trying to build likes and followers and effective posting and, and all of that. Of course, it's 11.06. We'll be back at 11.16, and then we'll go on.